Okay guys, welcome back. We're gonna spend some time trying to figure out how the heck we add AC voltages and currents together. Now, before we add AC voltages and currents together, I'm gonna to get this piece of scrap paper out and we're just gonna talk about adding DC voltages really quickly, just so that we have, you know, some basic understanding of what's going on, at least with DC. Now, if I have DC, guys, let's say, I mean, this isn't going to be hard, okay, super easy. Let's say I have two DC sources here. This guy is 10 volts. This guy is 20 volts, okay? So what's the, you know, I measure this with a voltmeter, 10. Measure this with a voltmeter, 20. Measure this with a voltmeter, 30. All right? Very simple. Now, the trickier thing is... What happens if I try to add some AC voltages together like this? So let's say this is 120 volts, okay? And this is 120 volts. Take a look at this with a scope, guys. I see, you know, this. Take a look at this one with a scope, guys. I see this, all right? And my question, I guess, to you is, you know, measure this with an AC meter, 120. Measure this with an AC meter, 120. What happens if I measure this with an AC meter? And better still, what happens when I put a scope? You know, I got a scope across this, looks like this. Scope across this, looks like this. What happens if I scope across this? Now, the best way to figure it out, what's going on here, is to think about, you know, our DC circuit here, where, I don't even know where it is anymore here, where, you know, I can just add the two voltages together and I'll get the sum, but these voltages are always changing, and so what's actually occurring is, i am actually got to measure or add the two instantaneous values of voltage together along the entire sine wave. Now, if this is 120 volts, guys, that's the RMS or effective value. It means that the max value here, guys, which is equal to the, you know, 120 over 0.7071, it's the, you know, E effective over 0.7071, it comes out to basically 170 volts. It's 120 divided by 0 0.7071, it's 169.7. And so we'll just call that 170 volts peak. And same with this one. Now, if I take a look at this, I've got zero volts here and zero here. So if I was wondering what the, you know, what it would look like if I scoped, scoped them both at zero degrees for sure, I'm going to get a different color here because that would be very pretty here, okay? So if I look at these at the same time, zero plus zero is zero. Now, at the 90 degree mark, I got 170 here and 170 here. So at the 90 degree mark, I'd be 170 plus 170, so it's going to be 340 there, okay? And then at the 180 degree mark, I'm gonna be down here again, it's gonna be zero, and this is minus 170 and so is this. So at the you know, 270 degree mark, I'm going to be 340 again, okay, minus 340, and then over here, I'm going to be zero plus zero, okay? And so the sine wave, if I add these two together, would actually look like this, okay? It would be another sine wave, and it would be peaking at 340 volts, okay? And it would be peaking down here at minus 340 volts. Now, that would be the peak values. What about the RMS values? Well, the effective voltage, it should be the peak voltage, right, times 0.7071. And if I do that, you will find out that the sum of these two AC voltages is actually 240 volts. All right, guys, so nothing crazy there. 340, excuse me, times 0 0.7071, it's 240 volts, okay? So I just spent a long time basically telling you that if I did this 120 AC, and that is the RMS value, plus this RMS 120 value, it's going to give me a sum of 
the two, which is 240 volts, okay? And so why are we spending all this time on that? Well, because you could come get a situation, guys, where two AC voltages are not in phase. And so I'm gonna draw that here for a second, okay? So let's say I had one AC voltage, you know, and another AC voltage, and I'm scoping this one, guys, and it looks like this, very nice, okay? And I'm scoping this one, and it looks like this, okay? And so we would say that these are two, let's say, I don't know, we're gonna pick a different value here, 190 volts, no, let's go 220, okay? 220 AC, and if I say 220 AC, that's RMS, right guys? All right, so if these are 220 volts AC each and I'm adding them up like this, but they're not in phase, you know, what is the sum of the two? Because as we saw in the last demonstration, the sum of the two will be all the sums of the instantaneous values and none of the instantaneous values are actually lining up now. So for example, when this one's at zero degrees, this one's already at its peak value and this one's going up, and at the same time, this one's going down. So how am I gonna to try to figure out, A, what that waveform looks like, and B, what is actually the sum of those two voltages? And the way we do that, and the way you did it in level one, in level two, I should say, is you drew phasers, okay? And phasers are just lines with arrows, right? And the length of the line is going to represent the quantity of the thing that you're adding up. And the direction of the line is going to be represented by the phase angle of the, you know, quantity that you're looking at. And phasers are used and you use them all the time in level two in order to add, phase, you know, add voltages, currents, resistances, impedances, blah, blah, blah. And so we're just going to go over it again so that you remember how it all works all right guys so if i were to draw or add these two voltages up as phasers i would have to draw my little phaser world here guys and uh there's my little phaser world and then i would have to draw those guys as lines with arrows on there now we're going to say that this 220 it's at zero degrees because that's where it's starting and so i'm going to draw that 220 volts as a line with a certain length, and that line is going to represent, you know, this quantity right here, 220 volts, okay? And we're gonna say here at zero degrees, because there it is, here's zero, right? Here's 90, here's 180, here's 270, right guys? And whipping around here back to 380. Now the other phaser, which is this 220 volts, it's sitting here over here, you know, 90 degrees out of phase from this one. And so I'm gonna draw it sitting here at 90 degrees with my nice orange marker. Now I gotta actually draw it right here. And I'm gonna do that for now, I guess. We'll draw it right there. There's my 220 volts. And it's sitting over here at 90 degrees, okay? But in order to add phasers, I always got to move them tip to tail. So you got to move one of these two phasers. When we say tip to tail, the tail of this guy has to go on the tip of the other one, right? Can't just leave it there. You got to pick it up and move it. And so we're going to pick this one up and we're going to drop it to the tip of the other one. There's my 220 volts at 90 degrees. All right, guys. And the sum of the two is going to get always this is gone now right guys that guy we moved it the sum of the two is going to be a line that starts at the beginning of the first one and ends at the end of the end of the other one and this thing in this case it's represented by this brown line right here and we call that the resultant all right and that is the you know the resultant voltage if i added these two now, in order to calculate that result, what this is is a spectacular 
right angle triangle, right? And that is the hypotenuse. And this is the other two short sides. And in level two, the way you guys calculated that was using the formula C, you know, C squared is, it's a Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared, right? In other words, the resultant, it's going to be equal to the square root of, you know, 220 squared plus 220 squared. I mean, this is just the, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Right, guys? And you guys would have used that a lot last year. So that result in there should be the square root of those. So let's calculate that for a second. Let me get my trusty calculator in here. And the way I always calculate that, I forget about the square root sign. I don't want to put that in because if I do, i got to put brackets around it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't like doing that. So I just go 220 squared plus 220 squared equals, and then I take the square root of that. So I hit square root and hit equals. And it says it's 311 volts, okay? 311.1, okay? Volts. And what that means is the sum of these 220 volts, the two of them, is not 440 volts, guys. It is 311 volts. And the reason it's 311 volts is because they are out of phase. And the only way you're going to calculate the sum of the two is by using some trig if they're out of phase. Okay? But before this video ends, there's one more thing we can calculate. And that is, I know this one looks like this, and I know this one looks like this, but what does this one look like? And at what angle? And you can actually see the angle right here and I can actually already tell that it is 45 degrees you know because I got these two sides are the same but I can calculate that using SOHCAHTOA right and SOHCAHTOA the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse sorry we'll write it down sine of the angle opposite over hypotenuse cosine of the angle, adjacent over hypotenuse, tan of the angle, opposite over adjacent. Okay, and this is in your handy book here, right there, okay? Uh, right there, so there it is. Now, I could actually use any of these to calculate that angle, but I have a thing for tan. I always use tan for calculating my angles. You'll always see me using tan for calculating my angles. And so I'm going to use this to calculate the angles. Now, the question is, which is the adjacent side and which is the opposite side? Now, if this is the angle that I'm dealing with, then this side across from it or opposite it is always the opposite. And if this is the angle I'm dealing with, then this one that's adjacent to it is always the adjacent. Okay, guys? So this would be the adjacent. This one would be the opposite. This one would be the hypotenuse, right? And that's how all triangles are going to work. All right, guys? And uh, let's calculate it. The tan of the angle, guys. It's the opposite over the adjacent, which means the angle is the opposite over the adjacent inverse tan. This should look familiar, okay? And so it's going to be 220 over 220 shift tan, okay? And I'm going to type it in right here. It's going to be 45, but 220 divided by 220 equals shift tan equals 45 degrees okay how do you guys feel about that okay so come back for the next video and we'll take up a different one all right or we'll try a different one see ya